Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago, as usual. Yes, that's right. I sneak attacked you. I sneak attacked you, and it's Natalie's fault. I uh, Nat Natalie sent me a clip that she says is good. I believe her. I haven't seen it. And uh, I thought I'd start early so that so that uh, w when I start the, the rest of it, it'll it'll be at the, the same time. So let's get it going, shall we? Pocket is State of Kansas versus George Brennan Marshall, 23 CR 294. The state appears by Jared Regeer. Mr. Marshall appears in person in custody from the Butler County Jail. Mr. Marshall, you're here for a first appearance. Do you have a copy of your charges? No, I, I'm not telling any stories today. First person, second person, or third person either. And I'll put that on my life and then plus a million dollars and God or, and the devil too. And I swear. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not lying judge. All right. I wasn't asking. I'll come to your know. office and tell you too. Okay. Now I understand why she said I have to do it. Base, I'm not lying. <laughs> Mr. Marshall, I wasn't asking you to tell any stories. I was asking you if you had a copy of your charges. Do you have a copy of your charges? Nope. Nobody told me nothing, and I was the first person there, last one out, been there, done that, and everybody's lying. I swear to God. Okay. Look, now, now he's trying Mr. to. Mr. Marshall, I'm going to ask you to refrain from speaking momentarily okay. so I can read. Yeah, and words. I need some glasses too because these motherfuckers are tricky. Hey, let's. <laughs> They're what, 3D what, tricks. You don't need glasses to listen. Okay. All right. There's two counts, both alleged to have occurred on June 7th, 2023 in Butler County, Kansas. Count one alleges that you did then and there unlawfully threatened to commit violence communicated with the intent to place Mary Perry in fear. That is criminal threat, a level nine person felony. That carries a sentence in prison of between five months and 17 months. Count two alleges that you did unlawfully and knowingly place a uniformed or properly identified state, county, or city law enforcement officer, Deputy K. Marshall, in reasonable apprehension of immediate bodily harm while he was engaged in the performance of his official duties. That is assault on a law enforcement officer, a class A person misdemeanor, maximum penalty, 12 months in jail, and up to a $2,500 fine. So those are your charges, Mr. Marshall. You won't be asked to enter a plea today. Mr. Marshall, can you sit back up, please? Oh, I, was, I thought you just said you don't have to pay attention to listen. I'm sorry, sir. No, I said you didn't need glasses. Uh, can you take your glasses off, please, so I can see your eyeballs? No, sir. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Your case will be set in front of Judge Ricky. You'll next go in front of him on July 31st at 2.30 in the afternoon. Oh, that should be fun. Preliminary hearing control. Docket, that hearing will be done by Zoom. Can you hire your own attorney, Mr. Marshall? Mr. Marshall, can you afford to hire an attorney? Thank you. Mr. Marshall. Oh, good Lord. He hears him. You with us? What's the state's recommendation for bond, Mr. Regeer? Uh, Your Honor, 15,000 uh, cash assurity with um, all standard conditions, um, including no contact with the, the property of the victim. Um, this case does have a rather interesting set of um, facts to it, if you'll pardon me from saying so. It looks like um, <laughs> when the defendant um, if you'll pardon was me. in the process of being apprehended, according to paragraph seven of the affidavit, he had 
indicated to the victim, quote, I swear this is how I'll kill you. It looks like the defendant does have quite um, long criminal conviction history, including two um, disorderly conducts, three criminal damage to properties. Um, um, sir, I, miss, I misheard that. Did you say, do you have your... Mr. You Marshall, your it's your not your turn to speak. It's not your I thought turn. I just heard him say uh, AK. Mr. Marshall, it's not your turn to speak. Uh, well, th this is fantastic. You couldn't have a more stoic group than Judge Crum, Jay, Jay Regeer, and the Sally Port stash. Th th this guy's just spewing his crazy. No, no one bets an eye. Oh, I'm sorry for interrupting, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Regeer. Um, interference with conduct of a public business, um, as well as um, uh, criminal deprivation of property. Additionally, it looks like um, this defendant does have a history of failures to appear, um, misdemeanor fleeing elude the law enforcement officer, as well as misdemeanor interference with a law enforcement officer. So under those circumstances, the state does believe that a uh, 15,000 cash surety with uh, previously requested standard conditions is appropriate. I'll set bond in the amount of 20,000 cash or surety, no contact with Mary Perry. Um, Judge, excuse yes. me for interrupting. Uh, Judge Crum, is that how you pronounce it? It is. What do you mean? JC or Judge Crum, or you want me to call you Mr. Crum or what? Judge Crum is fine. Go ahead. What do you need, Mr. Morrison? Yes, sir. Have you read the book that he's reading? Or are you just believing or going off of your heart or instinct or what? Have you ever met? Uh, oh, Jay? wow. What's your name, sir? My name is Mr. 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 Marshall. I've set bond. Anything else? I'm going to appoint James Watts to represent you. Of He's course. attorney in El Dorado. If you make bond, you need to contact his office. They'll provide you with his contact information. So right. is everybody excused here? Yep. <laughs> we'll see. Mr. Regeer, anything for the state? Uh, yes, Your Honor. As far as the uh, next court date, and also I'm assuming the no contact order includes the residence of the victim. <clears throat> That's correct. I believe we already set a court date on July 31st at 2.30, didn't we? I Forgive me, Your Honor. I may have misheard. And, um, okay. If I didn't, it's July 31st at 2.30. Very good, Your Honor. All right. We'll be in recess. Mr. Marshall, now you are excused. Pocket is State of Kansas. Well, thank you, Natalie D. That was absolutely fantastic. That, that was a good starter. <laughs> I, get, I get an emergency message. Now I know why. That that was something else. That that was a thing of beauty. All right. Now, now on to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> <laughs> That's so believable. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's do let's do this thing, shall we? All right. Let me hear. Wow. I had a tegu. I had an iguana. Iguanas are cool. Iguanas are cool. Yeah, but I. I had to I had to give up my hurt phase to go to, when I when I got a dog. She said, "Nope, no, we're not gonna do we're not gonna do reptiles and dogs." That's. How big of a dog did you get? I got an English bulldog. I got my friend's pet. They're sweet. Love her. Man, I know that some of them aren't, but every pit I've ever been around has been a sweetheart. She's a loving. She's like. It's it's how they're raised. I'm sure. Yeah, but yeah, English Bulldogs for the win. They don't know their dogs. They think they're people. And they're right. <laughs> Who have you got? Who do you have? Mr. Barla. Okay. All right.
We moved it, we moved it up, right? Okay. Ms. Bambro. Bueno. How are you doing this I am fine fantastic. Friday morning? Fantastic. Every day. Every day. Are you are you in morning yet? Are you gonna are you gonna ride the wave today and then be in morning next week when I'm not here? No. <laughs> We, well, just look at it this way. You missed me for a week, and then you got me for two. <laughs> so, don't out, don't I won't even be know. here. What part of this did you get not get? I'm not going to lie. That's on That's you. That's still June. That's still June. Well, your second week ain't going to be here. All right. You I'm going to miss you during my weekend. I'm going to miss you during my weekend. But I'm not doing it your weekend. <laughs> See, I'm... I'm mature enough to acknowledge that I'll miss you. Uh, I know. <laughs> Mr. Tolson, how are you doing today, sir? I'm uh, doing all right, sir. How are you? I'm well. Better than I deserve, I promise. <laughs> Mr. Tolson, you're for the court. Yeah. You're for the court charter driving under the influence. Do you understand that charge? Yes, sir. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Based on your application, once you do qualify, I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. So you have an attorney now. Any questions about that? Uh, no, sir. Deputy, criminal history? Uh, you had a sentence on a battery last month. Um, Virginia, 22, wrongful use of controlled substance, sexual abusive contact. And that's it. Bond said 2,500, no alcohol. Court date's going to be June 12th at 1 o'clock. Good luck, sir. Thanks, sir. Step to your right to the T. Right. So, Ms. Gaffney, it looks like we might be ready on Mr. Gokin Rango. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Gokin Rango, can you hear the court, sir? I can hear you, sir. Buckle up, people. This is just strange. I, I It starts strange and gets stranger. Wonderful. Can I have you state your name? Oh, this, I have to thank Colin for this. He, he, he sent it to me in Discord. And I, wow. Name and date of birth, please, for the record. Hello, my name is Cleve Allen Rango. I was born on March 21st, 1991. All right, Mr. Rango, have you had plenty of time today to talk to your attorney, Ms. Gaffney? Well, opinions vary, but uh, I'm good. You need any additional time? Uh, I'm okay, thank you. Okay. Ms. Gaffney, how is Mr. Goheen Rango asking to proceed? Will waive the reading of the information and for not guilty. I would actually like the reading of information if you don't mind. Oh. Is my attorney talking with the prosecutor right now? Yeah, Your Honor, I, I don't I think just, the Mollies were off I've yet. Heard, oh, okay. I appeared to the district court for first appearance, given the presentation yeah, there yeah. and here today. I was asking his attorney whether there's any competency concerns where we would be issuing a 1077 uh, order. There is a history of that. It has been on the that's back right. of my mind. That's what I'm checking in with his attorney about. I can clear that up right now, Your Honor. I've passed three. I've never failed a competency review. My actually, my attorney said I passed with flying colors. Yeah, um, Mr. Bogey, I'm going to ask you to stop talking again. Let me do the talking. Oh, at this point, I was just sharing with the. I was just sharing the truth with the judge. Is Mr. Goheen Rango. Thank you. Is Mr. Yes, Goheen Rango still want me to read the information? Uh, if it's not a hassle to anybody, I would appreciate it for the record, Your Honor. Mr. Goheen Rango, I have in front of me citation 3A0121573 uh, filed by the City of La Center, specifically uh, Police Officer Ryan Preston. Uh, mm -hmm. The date of that citation is June 5th, 2023. The charge is disorderly conduct under RCW 9A.0. 9A.84.030. Awesome, well said. Oh, it gets significantly weirder than this. Citation reads Thank on. Uh, is that enough? Oh. 
I'm still listening. Do you want me to read more? Um, whatever's helpful, Your Honor. Mr. Goheen Rango, you have the right to have the citation read. Your attorney previously stated you were going to waive that right. You then asked me to. She, she, she did not actually ask me if I wanted that. She just went ahead and did that. And, well, Mr. Um, I noticed Mr. Gohan Rango, I'm asking you now. Yeah. Do you want me to continue to yeah. read probable cause statement into the record? Um, you know what? Maybe I should consult with my attorney. Okay. I'm in a breakout room. All right, thank you. I, I really apologize for any um, inconvenience this is to Mr. Gohan Rango, just talk to your attorney. Okay. Thank you, sir. What I'm gonna have to do if he wants me to read the okay. information is the filed information. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Ms. Gaffney, are we ready on Mr. Gokin Ringo? Yes, sir. And how is the defense asking to proceed? Mr. Gokin Ringo, are you fine with waiving the formal reading of the information? You know what? I would. I, I, I'm just going by what my attorney suggested. Um, however, I can't hear her when she when she speaks. I don't know if she's speaking in a microphone or not. I can't hear her at all. I'll be done. Uh, that was a little better. Thank you. Hey, Sean, we're going to enter a not guilty. And Mr. Bunny Rango, are you okay with the judge not reading the information? Okay. All right. All right, I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty at this point. What's so weird about this is the whole problem is his affect. If you boil it down to his responses, he's being a jerk and, and you know, going back and forth on, on reading the information. But he's not saying anything crazy. His affect is crazy. We're going to be discussing conditions of release. I'll first hear from the city attorney, Ms. Carmi. I'm going to hear from Ms. Gaffney. Go ahead, Ms. Carmi. Yes, Your Honor. In this case, we are asking the court to um, impose the 10K bail that district court previously set. If released, we are asking for random UAs, enhanced release, no consumption of alcohol, non-prescribed drugs. The facts in this case allege three calls in a very short time period. You know what? I'm sorry. Um, I would like a formal reading. She's going to go into the facts, so why don't we just have a formal reading? Thank you. Good job. I would like the formal reading. Mr. Goheen Rango, I'm going to ask that you stop interrupting the process. I did. If, if we're going to go into the facts. Yeah, that's what we're here to do. <laughs> Me too, Your Honor. I will I'm sorry. I apologize. Reading. Stop apologizing. I'll do a formal reading, okay. but this is not your turn to talk. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Thank you. gone through the beginning of the citation. Citation reads on June 5th, 2023, the Bliss Center Police Department contracted through the Clark County Sheriff's Office, Richfield Police Department, and Callis Tribal Police were dispatched to 127 East 4th Street, Bliss Center, for a suspicious person. The caller, Elise, an employee of the Texaco gas station, called 911 to report a male, later identified as Cleve A. Goheen Rango, rummaging through the garbage and yelling. Elise told dispatch she was trying to close the store and Cleve was not allowing her to do so. It should be noted that 911 was called at 20.053 hours by Cleve's mother, Kimberly, who stated Cleve was intoxicated and walking somewhere around the center. 20.55 hours, an area resident called and stated Cleve was walking down North Beasley Road, yelling and opening mailboxes. Cleve is flagged as assaultive and aggressive behavior. Richfield Police and Cowlitz Tribal Police arrived on scene and stated Cleve was yelling at them, refusing to accept a ride home, stripping his clothes off, and walking all over in the parking lot. As I arrived on scene, I observed a vehicle traveling west on East 4th Street. As the vehicle got closer to Cleve, Cleve intentionally stepped off the sidewalk and began to wander into the lane of travel in front of the truck. 
while looking directly at the truck, causing the vehicle to drive into the oncoming lane of travel against the double yellow line. As the vehicle began to pass Cleve, Cleve jumped towards the vehicle and slapped the hood of the truck. The driver of the truck, Donnell V. Peiselchek, stated he had to drive into the other lane or else he would have hit Cleve. Donnell stated after passing Cleve, he had to quickly swerve back into the proper lane as the vehicle was coming towards him. Cleve was then placed under arrest for disorderly conduct as he intentionally obstructed vehicular traffic without lawful authority. While attempting to get Cleve into the patrol vehicle, he was less than cooperative at one point using his feet to push against the vehicle door in an attempt to not get in. After prolonged conversation with Cleve and moving his legs into the vehicle, he was secured without further incident. Once at the Clark County Jail, Cleve urinated and spit all over the rear prisoner compartment. Cleve was booked into the Clark County Jail. A certifying declaring a penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Washington and all statements made herein are true, accurate, and I'm entering my authorized user ID and password to authenticate it. Signature Ryan Preston. June 5th, 2023, City Council Center, County of Clark, State of Washington. Great. Yes, Your Honor, you just read the PC. Obviously, the court is aware of the allegations. The reason that the city is requesting bail is because we believe that there's escalating behavior, especially over the last year. There's now five pending misdemeanor cases ranging from disorderly to resisting arrest to criminal trespass second to assault in the fourth degree um, and a no contact protection uh, violation. Those are all pending. There are also two pending felony matters that involve assault of law enforcement officers in the third degree and intimidating a judge. Um, because of the behavior that the city believes is escalating, it does, we believe, create a community safety risk. Hence, our request for the continued bail. Otherwise, release conditions as noted in our request, including random UAs. Go ahead, Ms. Those are all pending. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor. Your Honor, to release him on his own. Uh, and um, I do want Mr. Goheen to know that his mother is here because I don't think he see her keep sitting at council table. He is a mental health advocate. I do want the court to know that he is trying to get mental health treatment to Columbia River Mental Health to the Recovery Cafe to the Northwest Lowell River Road Treatment Center. Um, he uh, has been residing uh, locally, he has local uh, address with uh, his mother. Uh, he hopes to enter the Life Without Commitment Consent Program. That's an inpatient treatment program in Bellingham, Washington. He does have family support in Bellingham, Washington. He has been in um, he has been attending AA weekly. Um, it appears that my client um, is an alcohol issue. Um, and, um, I think he's just got an a hole issue. He, he, he needs, they need to put him in for a stint. Uh, he, he'll get straightened out. I would ask the court to uh, at least run upon the concept so we can work to. Uh, and into mental health treatment, which the family has been doing for quite some time. I, I, I look into my court file. Uh, I know that they get to the hospital in April. Um, so the family is trying to get um, <laughs> mental health treatment. And a uh, component of that Not is doing that. Also being, um, an alcohol treatment. Um, but this is an intentional crime, and uh, it does appear from the uh, Follow the laws out there. There are questions as to whether the potential will happen at the time of that. As a matter of fact, they report just for the people who want to consider that in terms of the police. They also be commensurate with his economic status. He works with a farm hand who's had that job for over 20 years, I believe, and I talked to that employer. Uh, but his income, uh, he can't raise ten thousand dollars bail. Only he put the bail out before, and leave his mother go to that bail. The client's family is very slow. Additional on what is post bail? We can't afford post bail. Child and treatment. My client um, is asking that for not post bail raise because uh, he believes that that is a uh, violation. Uh, it is a very unusual punishment. Then in the pre-trial release, it's unconstitutional, and I'm uh, advocating for a final 
which requests will appear not to be there. That is my job. Oh, I'm also my mother, uh, excuse me, my client's mother is asking the board whether she can address it. Um, so my name is Kimberly Goldstein Elvin. Um, I am Pete's mother. For the last nine years, he has been suffering at the hands of the state of Washington through family court and the illegal capture of his children. Ma'am, I'd only like to hear about it. I'm going to take those time, sir, to put this on record because this is the crux of where he is. I have to speak from the bottom to get or from the top to under have you understand where this man is today. I'll be very quick. I have it down in my heart for about a minute and a half. But it must be put on record. Thank you. Um my tax all appreciate it very much. Sitting here. Once you hear from mom you will you'll understand more. So <clears throat> This is Cleve's second offense. Uh, he, in my opinion, and that's what some people call hitting the bottom, uh, he is well documented. I have suffered greatly with his mental and behavioral health. But because he is my son and I love him deeply and we have a cause, I just want my son well. Therefore, Last month of the Clark County Council and the Clark County Board of Health, I needed my son to be the poster child for mental and behavioral health. We have millions and millions of dollars going into this system, and by God, it's in paperwork uh, for his bail release and all of this, that he should have been held better, um, what he might call, uh, and I, you know, his rights being violated, I might call that having a UA that I would write to every day yep. to hold him accountable for at least a month um, will serve him a lot more better than what has been happening, which has been nothing for, from any side. When you're mentally ill, you cannot make the choice to get help for yourself. I've seen it in action. He has a case here. I'm going to bring it up. In Olympia, I dropped him off. From, we were in a rally serving God, family, and country, and I dropped him off at a mental behavioral institution. Which finally, he was dressed nice. He had nothing. I took his phone. He was cut. His hair was cut nice, and he walked up to that place. Unfortunately, I had a flat and some other issues. I had to get home. It was just scheduled, but I sat there with him at this place for over five hours. Finally, eventually, I had to get home with an alien car and get dark. He eventually, because of his mental health issues, was arrested because he couldn't get into a mental health institution. I find that absolutely insane and probably illegal. But all of his cases will be documented. Why? Because we have a journey. We aim to get millions. Here's the way I see it, Greg Z. She's nuts. Of children out of CPS staffers that want to go home to their loving families. This system has broken my son, and it was the state of Washington that did it. And in my opinion, God told me it starts here in the state of Washington, in fact, in West Central Washington. So my son has been fighting for his five children. He cannot prevail against the system. And just so happens, I'll put on record, and this is a good long story, it's going to be documented, I know that in my heart, that my son named his first child Unity. So, I want to make so you said you said a minute, hold on, hold on. So you said a minute and 30 seconds. Well, you talked for four is, minutes sir, now. You know what, I don't take a lot of time, and this is a public open court, and I am going to ask the court to actually. But you're not a. No, not really. This, is, this isn't a time for your, uh, you know, political speeches here. It, it, it's a court hearing, and the judge is clearly in charge of it by rule. Party to the proceeding. Two more minutes to support where my son is in life. It is a complicated story, sir, and I am cutting a lot out. I will say this just because we have a lot of lessons. Unity is a child who's born on the day of Hanukkah. Due process. It happens only once every 74,000 years. 
Looking over the children of Daniel and Mordecai, the state of Washington is five children away. They have harmed these children, and he is suffering in no man. And I am witness to that. And yeah. I will stand up for my son, and that's what I'm doing. I will take only one more minute. So we are on that journey. And about four years ago, when my son was... Oh, good Lord. I, she she follows up. I'll only take one, one more minute with, so we were on that journey. Here we go. Slump in a courtroom like this, and everybody in the courtroom, but he and I knew that he was being framed. Why? Well, so I went, left that room for some reason. I went down to a place where I could get three emails. I typed it into Mount Vernon Police Department. I got back, looked, and was reading it as I went back. And I thought, oh my God, this police report is unredacted. This police report shows that God gave me that unredacted police report. So that my son was being framed, everybody knew, including his public pretender, that he was framed. He was another, another attorney, the ones that don't serve the Constitution and or the uh, people that I think were. And, um, and that police report, that's so why I told me the minute he was ever done, I said, get in the car, I want you to show me the park that you lost your wallet at. And he did. He took me a mile and a half away from where a CPS caseworker, Angela Paul, took a photograph of a park near the home of his children where they were being fostered at the time. He was stalking. And they, they framed him for stalking. That park was one block away from the family home. She got a nice framed photograph, but in the police report that nobody saw, or what Cleveland I didn't see, but they did, my people that should serve the families, they should serve us. And we have now Raquel Montoya Lewis took it right away, knowing that there was fabricated evidence from a caseworker. And she now sits because of Ginsley, who is a criminal, up in Washington, Olympia. And I'm going to take her down. Her name is Raquel Montoya Lewis. This is um, a I, even I have out of my mind. I, so. I, okay, we're, we're Thank done. You. Yeah, I really needed, and I, I, well, I, I, appreciate it. I would just I like to make sure that everybody knows I'm a speaker. I speak now at Portland. Well, that Your Honor, can I? Thank you. Thank you. I just want the court to note that the speaker just stated she was going to, quote, take down a Washington Supreme Court justice. Excuse me, it's a form of speech, and I don't know <laughs> the way that you're going to take it. And or pray that, ma'am. Thank you. And by the way, I also want to mention no. It's, it's a form of speech that, that also constitutes a chargeable offense, but okay. You mentioned something about uh, she, there being uh, uh, in intending to uh, intimidate a judge. That is a lie. It's the same judge. She actually has two felonies against my son as an active case. We're keeping that case alive. You, can, you can't make this up. She wants to gripe about an intimidating the judge charge after she literally just said, I'm going to take down a Supreme Court judge, justice. Okay. Right. Because it involved Supreme Court Justice Rockwell. Hey, ma'am, ma'am, we're, we're doing and good. And you mentioned that 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 is a lot. That was a lie. Yep. That has not been. Uh, she actually pleaded innocent of that, and it's another uh, case. Uh, yep. And I think the he's a big government much. taking advantage of my son. Too much leash, exactly. And this is the form of socialism and Marxism of which I fight against. By the way, Vancouver City Council. United Nations members, and this is what's happening folks right now. You'll see the public not getting to see. see I, I, don't put your hands on me, that's an arrest. Does he know that when he puts his hands on me, he arrested me? He didn't arrest I will go peacefully if he'll let me walk. Okay, sir. I want to let people know this is a form of socialism and Marxism okay, it's and time. communism, and this goes deeper than what you're going to do to my son. It's time to go. Help him. I it's want him to go. go. And it won't daily randoms to U.S. Thank you very much. It's not weekly. It's not yet the price. <laughs> Help my young man so I can go back and get our grandchildren unity. What's happening here? Wait a second. There is a statement just made from the audience. Um, where we go one, we go all. I told you. 
Right. So what so what what does that have anything to do with um, disorderly conduct, which is like a misdemeanor? <laughs> I'm not the audience, and I'm not my mom. So this is good. Now he disavows his mom, <laughs> which, which, to his credit, is the right thing to do. <laughs> what does that have to do with this? And why is she bringing that up? Was allowing. I, I think. I, I think she just violated my rights right there. I was allowing my mother to speak. Regarding I appreciate that. But Lisa just talked. Lisa just quoted the audience in my case. I think she violated my rights right there. What? That's like smear. That that reflects poorly on me in my case now, and I'm just seeking justice. So what did it, what does the audience comment have to do with me and my justice for my case? Yeah, I, the audience I, I comment don't know. is not being taken into consideration for your case. Thank you, Your Honor. Also, I would like to make a short statement to the court based on. Can we mute Mr. Goheen Rango? He's talked already. All I'm right. sorry? Sir, I'm not. I, you have an attorney. I've done everything that you've asked me to do. I've allowed everyone I, to speak who is asked to speak. We are done. I'm setting future court dates and I'm setting release conditions. We're not going to do any more today. Okay, Your Honor. I, I just, all right, thank you. Thank you. All right. So on cause number 3A0121573, I am going to lower the bail uh, to $5,000. Why? I do think it ba meets a balancing test both of proportionality regarding the fact this is a simple misdemeanor charge. It does take into account, though, the number of existing current pending charges that Mr. Goheen Rango currently has. So that's the test that I'm putting in place. I'm going to set this matter over two weeks to Ms. Gaffney's next court date. Ms. Gaffney, you're going to be here next on the 22nd of June, I believe. The June 22nd court date is going to be at 10 a.m. Mr. Goheen Rango, if you are still in custody, uh, you will be appearing cer certainly before that, likely at 8.30. Your conditions of release are as follows. You're to violate no laws. You're to appear at all mandatory court dates. You're to notify the court of any change of address or phone number. You're not to consume or possess any alcohol or non-prescribed drugs or controlled substances. You are released. You are going to be on intensive pretrial release. I'm not going to impose random UAs at this time. Your Honor, thank you for hearing what my mom had to say, and like I said, that's her. Um, I, I understand. My intention you, was not that it would go the direction that it went, but certainly I yeah. wasn't going to cut her off. I was hoping that she would get to something pertinent regarding your release. But so I, 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 I can, not I can tell you that she meant to. She meant to do that. Um, I'm. So the bail that I was at last time was over twenty thousand dollars. I still have only I, I have over seventeen hundred left to pay in debt. So and I work almost every single day. And then I have pretrial meetings. I have to drive forty Excuse miles me, up Rango, north to Calais. I've set, I've set release. I appreciate okay. the circumstance. I've All right. the bail release conditions. Thank you, Ron. I think it's an appropriate balance, and we'll see you in a few weeks, if not before. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Apologize for my demeanor or misdemeanor. <laughs> right, let's call Mr. Munson's case. Yep. Benjamin Dietz. And Benjamin Dietz. All right, we'll next take up State of Kansas versus Benjamin. They just can't. They just can't behave out in Kansas either. Benjamin Edward Dietz, 20 TR, 1962. State appears by Jared Regeer. Mr. Dietz appears in person in custody, all parties appearing by Zoom. Uh, seriously makes you wonder. Mr. Dietz, it looks like you failed to appear back on December 5th of 2022. I agree. It wasn't bad. Why did you <laughs> fail to appear back in December? I'm trying to remember exactly because... 2022 was such a difficult year for me. Um, 
It honestly started back in 2021. If you would like to hear the story. Well, that that's not necessary. Um, okay, it looks because like you've got an outstanding motion to revoke diversion that hasn't been resolved. Is that the status of the file, Mr. Aguirre? One moment, Your Honor. I don't know what that means. Oops. Um, it would appear so, Your Honor. All right. Well, Mr. Dietz, apparently you were on diversion, and then the state filed a motion to revoke your diversion. Oh. However, before Judge Webster had an opportunity to make a decision on that case, you failed to appear, so it has yet to be resolved. Gotcha. So, I know I ran out of money, and I had no ability to drive anywhere, and it got really, really bad for me. I almost got evicted twice from my home. And I was in a spot where it was hard for me to earn any income. I had lost my job because I lost my license. And I was trying to figure out new ways to make money. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to, I think Darren Patterson's still your attorney. If he's not, I'll reappoint him to represent you. But you'll still need to resolve this this okay. case in front of Judge Webster. And that court date will be September 11th at 8 o'clock in the morning by Zoom. September 11th at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Looks like the bond had been set at $258 cash. Yes, sir. Are you able to post that? Uh, I don't have an easy way to get a hold of anybody because... For some reason, the county has found a way to try to make money off of prisoners, trying to make phone calls. Because a simple phone call is no longer free anymore. Yeah, we got it. We, we understood your complex argument without, <laughs> without the addition, but all right, thank you. I've had people in my past tell me, if you ever get in trouble, just go ahead and call me. And when I was trying to make a phone call, they wouldn't let me do it until 5.30 in the morning. And then at 5.30 in the morning, I didn't know if anybody would be awake. I had to make collect calls to them. Nobody answered. And uh, most Mr. people, when they hear a collect call from a jail, they don't want to pay that money for 40 cents a minute for a standard phone call. It should be free. Mr. Dietz, looks like this is a case in which the fines and costs have been sent to collections. I'm going to put you on a $500 OR bond. If my fine is less than that, why would I pay more? Because the case hasn't been resolved and this appears to be a, a class B misdemeanor. So you don't have to post cash. You can sign your own bond without paying any money, Mr. Deese. Oh, okay. That's I was high. not aware of that, sir. But you need to reappear because there's, there's allegations I'm um, alleging that you failed to comply with your diversion terms. So you'll have to take those up with Miss Judge Webster on September 11th at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. All right. They should have Darren Patterson's card there, and they should have written that court date down for you. If you don't have any other holds, you should be able to be released later on today. Uh, from what I understand, there's a hold for Sumner County for a fine about $253. Okay. Well, whenever this you get out of jail, you'll need to contact Mr. Patterson's office. So Today? If you get out today, if you get out later on, just contact his office so they'll know how to contact you. Okay. I'm just curious how I get out today. Well, as I said, you can OR on this case. However, if you have other holds, you'll have to take care of those holds. So as far as this case goes, you have an OR bond. You'll need to sign that form, and then you'll okay. be released on this case. Your Honor? Okay. Yes. Um, 
First off, I'm assuming that on the September 11th, it will be on the pending motion to revoke diversion for the That's courts. Correct. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and uh, secondly, I am. I wish to have it noted for the record that I'm not in favor of this bond modification. The bond has already been set by Judge Webster at a very minimal amount from the state's perspective, which would appear appropriate uh, given the outstanding balance alleged in item one of the motion to revoke diversion. Noted, Mr. Regeer. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, we'll be in recess. Thank you, Mr. Dietz. Yep. Uh, Mr. Steiner's case. Uh, Mr. Steiner just had a chance to talk to Mr. Settles in a breakout room. Uh, Mr. Settles, we are set for a PV hearing this afternoon. Uh, let me just go to you. Are we actually going to conduct the hearing? I don't think we should, Judge. And uh, I have uh, the reason why is I don't think that Mr. Steiner would like me to be his attorney. I think there's a lack of trust communication. Okay, this is this is a wild one too. This is uh, from Kristen up in Trevor City. I thought they were behaving themselves up in Trevor City because I haven't heard from them in a few days. But apparently not. This one is kind of sad and kind of interesting. And Judge, this isn't the first time I have represented Mr. Steiner in the past. And uh, he had a lack of trust in me in the past. And uh, I had to withdraw previously. And so uh, we started up this representation. We attempted to start anew, fresh, because in some respects we do get along. Uh, but uh, after some point in time, I think that uh, Mr. Steiner has lost his trust in me again. And uh, and it's easy to do, I think. You lose your trust in me once, you know, the second time it's easy. He certainly lost his uh, confidence in me. And, uh, and so communication is difficult at best. I'd ask the court to consider appointing him another attorney. I don't know that I am. I think I'm the first attorney on this PV. I don't know if that matters. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Steiner, let me go to you. Uh, you obviously heard what Mr. Settle said. Um, if uh, the only complication, so to speak, with that is um, Mr. Settles is the first attorney that was appointed to your case. Uh, so based on what he said, if you don't feel comfortable having him represent you, I'm perfectly fine appointing a different attorney or asking MIDC more accurately to appoint a different attorney. Uh, the only issue is that's obviously going to delay our ability to have the hearing today. So that's the only consideration I want uh, you to, uh, to make. So knowing that, uh, would you like to get a different attorney or are you comfortable proceeding with Mr. Settles as your attorney? I would like uh, co-counsel. I'd like to represent myself and I would like the, the document out of Judge Power file, the original document. That order was clear when i signed it there was nothing there were no conditions of parole on that order are, are you talking about your probation order sir this is right yes i am and and the and the grand traverse county sheriff when he pulled up couldn't believe there were no conditions of pr probation on there okay well so hang on one second hang on, hang on sir hang on let me just, Ms. Patrick, uh, do you have the original order, <clears throat> excuse me, of probation in your file? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Okay. Um, and this isn't part of the evidentiary process. I just generally, are there terms of probation on it? Yes, Your Honor, there are. Okay. Would one include that he's not to consume alcohol? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Steiner, were you able to hear those answers? Yes, I did. Okay. Are you talking about a different document than the original order of probation that Ms. Patrick would be referring to? I saw the original one that Judge Power signed, and she couldn't believe it herself. She told me, she says, there are no conditions of probation on here. I can't believe it. And I was able to do some boxing, smoke pot, and there was nothing about drinking on there. Okay. Um, so... I guess what I did is I just looked through the court file uh, because it's obviously electronic. Uh, we're I mean, this, this is sad. This is what's strange about this one is the level of honesty, both from the defendant and his attorney. This guy's just, and where it's sad is he's just given up on life. That much is clear. He's given up on life. But aside from that, he's oddly sort of likable, I guess just from his honesty. System, uh, and I pulled up 
uh, document. Uh, it is. It was filed September 27, 2022. Is that the order of probation that you have, Ms. Pepper? It was signed by Judge Power on September 14th of 2022? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, Mr. Steiner, just so you're aware, sir, what I'm looking at uh, is an electronic copy of the same document that Ms. Patrick was referring to. It's entitled Order of Probation. Uh, it's for your case. Uh, and then it is four pages long. And on the last, on the bottom of page three, on to the top of page four, is the section entitled Defendant's Acknowledgement, where it has the paragraph where it indicates, I have read or heard the order of probation and received a copy. I understand and agree to comply with this order. I also understand that federal and or state law may prohibit me from possessing or purchasing ammunition or a firearm, including a rifle, pistol, or revolver, if the court found that I represent a credible threat to the physical safety of a named person and or explicitly prohibited item in item 10, the use, attempted use, or threatened use of physical force that would reasonably be expected to cause bodily injury to that named person. Uh, obviously, the last, the last, hang on one second. The last part obviously doesn't imply uh, doesn't apply to you. I was just reading the entire paragraph, uh, but it's defendant's acknowledgement, and then it has what appears to be your signature from uh, looks like September twenty seventh of two thousand and twenty two. Well, the document I saw was clean. There was nothing checked on it. So amazing. Well, well, let me, so I guess, I don't know what you mean by checked. The, the items that are listed for terms of probation, they are numbered. There's no box that is checked per se next to the items. Right, okay, numbered then. Whatever, however you want, term, whatever terminology, syntax. Okay, no, I just wanted to make sure that we were talking about the same thing. Yes, yes. Okay. So, I, I mean, I guess, so that's the order that the court would have to go off of because it's the order of probation that is done for this case. So that's the information that I would have to use to make that determination uh, at a hearing of whether or not you violated uh, the terms of probation. Those are the terms that I would have to analyze. So I guess with that information, let me go back to the original question, which was, do you want Mr. Settles to continue to represent you or do you want a different attorney appointed by the uh, MIDC representative. What what would my exposure be if I pled guilty right now? Well, uh, Ms. Patrick, let me ask you, uh, this is a technical probation violation, Mr. Steiner, and so that can have an impact on that. Uh, how many, or if there have been any, how many previous probation violations have there been? He's had one, Your Honor. Okay. So, Mr. Steiner, uh, they changed the statutes a couple of years ago. I think I might have talked about this a little bit at your arraignment. Uh, because this is a technical violation of your probation, uh, the penalty is sort of depends on whether or not there have been previous probation violations. Uh, it sounds like you have had one prior probation violation, and so the maximum possible penalty would be 30 days. Let's just get it over with. Oh, okay, well, uh, I mean, as part of the plea taking process, uh, and you're familiar with that, where we have to establish a factual basis, and I have to ask you questions about the violation. So I, I don't want you to, to plea simply because you want to be done with it. You're going to have to acknowledge that you violated a term of probation. So I just want to make sure that you understand that. I understand all that. I've been through this uh, for, I don't know, 50 years. <laughs> okay, no, nope, that's perfectly fine, sir. I just have to check. Um, well, then uh, let's talk about this. So you obviously would be entitled to a contested hearing and obviously you'd be entitled to representation at that hearing uh, in order to challenge the allegation. And then uh, the department would have to establish evidence uh, by a preponderance that you did in fact violate your probation, but you're waiving both of those rights in order to acknowledge uh, and plead guilty. Is that correct? That's correct. And I'll keep Phil Settles on as attorney. Okay. Um, and then let's, wrap, let's, talk. let's wrap, excuse me, let's wrap this up for the expedience of the court and save money. Everyone, it's costing everyone money here. It's costing me time, my life. I have a chronic illness and, you know, 
<laughs> my time's limited regardless if i go to prison jail whatever so let's just get this over with okay well it, there isn't the possibility of uh, prison in your case uh, the maximum exposure we've already talked about um but let's talk about count one uh, according to the probation violation it indicates that you violated condition 2.0 in that on or about may 26th of this year uh, that you consumed alcohol it also indicates that you provided a preliminary breath test result of 0.25 percent are both of those things true sir uh yes the first one is the second one i was coerced into okay well let's focus on the uh defendant oh, consumed sure. alcohol language uh did you in fact consume alcohol on may 26th of this year yes i did and um, it was a term of your probation. I understand the discussion we had about the order before, uh, but you understand that the order of probation that the court has uh, includes a provision that you not use or possess alcoholic beverages or other intoxicants. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, then to the violation that you consumed alcohol on or about May 26th of this year, how do you wish to plead? Guilty. Okay, I'll accept that guilty plea. I'll find that it's understanding, voluntary, and accurately made. Uh, in terms of sentencing, um, Mr. Settles, would the preference be uh, to proceed to sentencing immediately? That would be the yes, Judge. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Patrick, does the department have any objection to proceeding to sentencing immediately? No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, then, Mr. Settles, let me begin with you. Any allocution that you'd like to make on Mr. Steiner's behalf? Judge, as you've heard, Mr. Steiner, he's been around for a long, long time. I don't know the, it, it was a, some time ago when he had this uh, police officer assaulting and resisting. I think since that time, his health has gone down. His, his, uh, he's, he's barely ambulatory. And uh, I don't think he's a danger to society at all. He's got a, you know, he's got some issues with drinking, unfortunately. The only place that seems like that we're able to place him for the time being, he doesn't have a home to live, is in a house that has alcohol. And the, this house, as I understand it, there are community houses in town uh, that are not dry houses. And uh, and that's that's a real problem for Mr. For Mr. Steiner. And uh, it turns out to be a real problem for probationary order to make the order such that he's every time he drinks is going to be a crime and probation violation. At this point in his life, I don't see us, yeah, I don't mean to give up hope, uh, but at this point in his life, the reality is, is that treating Mr. Steiner like a 40 year old person who has the beginning of a big alcohol problem, he's not that person. He's had an alcohol problem for a long, long time. And he's able, to, in some respects, he's been able to manage that without dying. But he's been involved in the criminal court system many times also because of that very reason. It would seem to me at this point in time, trying to correct that is, uh, is well, may not be probable. He's been in jail quite a few days now. I don't know if we have a place for him to go. But it would seem like to the benefit of all to he's sober right now to get him out and uh, and uh, there you go. I just I wish I had some other some other thing to say to make everything all better. But it's just not. No matter what anybody does, it won't be all better. That's the way I'm looking at. It. I don't. Isn't that refreshing, Judge? Do what you got to do. But my client's drunk. He's not going to stop drinking. He's not doing it. Let's not even play with probation. Put him in jail or let him go. But that's where we are. Me, my, I don't need me. I don't mean to be a negative Nelly. I think I'm looking at reality. But in any event, uh, what Mr. Steiner would have to say about this would be much more insightful. He knows more about it, Mr. Steiner. Uh, Mr. Steiner, if there's anything you have to say, go right ahead, sir. I haven't been arrested since I got off the street. I was in the hospital 20 times during COVID. I was in arrested 13 times. Uh, eight of those cases got thrown out. Uh, I think uh, six of them were R&Os because I was sleeping on a bench in the snow. And, you know, hey, it's a rough life out there. Uh, 
It's like I told Judge Power, don't you guys look at any of the good things I did? Like pay all those taxes on my acre of property down in the industrial park or my half million dollar house out on Silver Lake. You know, this shit <clears throat> happened. This this happened to me accidentally like it could happen to anyone. And it isn't just alcohol. If it was alcohol, I would have been arrested. It's not just alcohol, Judge. I've got other problems in addition. <laughs> I'm not going to behave. <laughs> just, just give me whatever sentence. By the way, we don't have it. We don't have it. You, can, you, I. We don't know what happens. The the hearing gets cut off. Direct all complaints to Natalie D. It begins. Judge Power. No, not Natalie D. Here. Kristen, Kristen in Traverse City this time. <laughs> told me if I get arrested again, he's thrown me in prison. And I haven't been arrested since that court order. It's been over a year and a half. And as uh, Mr. Settle said, I'm a functioning alcoholic or alcohol abuser. I'm not, a, I don't consider myself an alcoholic. I consider myself, I abuse alcohol. I drink every day. <laughs> I don't consider myself an alcoholic. I can I abuse alcohol. It, I, I mean, it's a little long, but I, I think it's a good T-shirt right there. <laughs> Big difference. I don't wake up shaking. I don't wake up and run down to the store and buy a, a half a pint of vodka or something to quit shaking. I get out with I work. I do what I have to do on the day, and then I have some beers. And fall asleep or take a nap. And a lot of times there's people around or, or situations or I'm outside in the yard and, and the police are there or there for someone else. And hey, it's John Steiner. I get caught up in it. <clears throat> but I, I have committed crimes in this town. I'm not a gangst a gangster. <laughs> Excuse me, selling dope and shit. All right, Mr. Steiner, you're free to continue if you have anything else to say, sir, but you will not swear. That's the second time. <laughs> Excuse me. Fantastic elocution. I'm not a gangster selling dope and shit, Judge. <laughs> but I'm not quitting drinking. Sorry for the uh, improper court decorum. <laughs> okay, uh, Ms. Patrick, any comment for the department? <laughs> Your Honor, he has a total credit of 119 days. He has sat 15 days on this instant violation. Um, he does have one prior violation for alcohol consumption. Served a 72-hour detainer. Uh, originally, when the PSI was written, I recommended Joe only sentence. Um, he has been on probation since September 9th of 22. I have a good rapport with John. I get along with John. We he he reports to me. Um, however, it is clear to me that he, the conditions of the probation, uh, I think we've maxed out our, what we can do for Mr. Steiner. Um, unfortunately, he's homeless now. He, he no longer has housing. Um, but in talking with Mr. Prevo from Jail Diversion, if he were to be discharged, uh, they will continue to work with him. Um, and I think that as unfortunate as it is, I would be recommending a discharge today, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, the overall credit figure was 119? 119. 119. Okay. That's correct. 15 days basically on this violation. That's true. Okay. Um, well, uh, it, it's quite clear to the court that I, I don't know that, as Ms. Patrick said, we're getting any benefit out of the terms of probation. I mean, the design of probation is to be rehabilitative in nature. Uh, I don't know that that's being accomplished anymore in Mr. Steiner's case. Uh, certainly, he's old enough to know what he's going to do and what he should do. And if those don't line up, he's well aware of the consequences. Yep. Eric Garrison. The case number is Elk County 17 DM 016. This stuff appears by and through Ms. Ridgeway. Mr. Garrison <laughs> appeal, appears in off. person and pro se. There are no other appearances. Uh, this matter was last before the court uh, last Friday, June 2nd. And when Mr. Garrison had failed to appear, a warrant was authorized. I do not believe that warrant has yet been issued. Um, What's that? When this case was scheduled, and this is in line with the uh, continuance order uh, for uh, June the 2nd, 
uh, last week, a week ago today, at uh, June second. Yes. And uh, when you weren't here. A week Thank you, David. So the last one, which doesn't surprise me, he was in for 119 days, so they gave him time served. And that makes all the sense in the world. So the, there, we actually do have the end. Warrant was uh, authorized. Uh, however, cool. I don't believe it has yet been issued. So if you would uh, uh, like to give any update to the court at this time, I'd be happy to hear it, uh, Mr. Gary. I, ha I had it in my calendar that it was today. I, uh, I, I called the alarm set. I had alarm set and everything. I, that's why I'm dabbing in now. Well, my docket sheet and the order of continuance, which was sent to you, uh, both uh, showed the case is set for June second at ten thirty. So I'm not sure uh, how the uh, challenge had arisen, but those were the uh, realities as reflected in the paperwork. Anyway, um, I showed at the time of the last hearing where you were here on April fourteenth that there was a current obligation of two hundred one dollars, and at that time or at least the most recently available uh, information uh, at that time was that the arrears balance was uh, $3,628. Uh, have you been able to make any additional payments? Are you working? What are your circumstances? Not yet. Not yet. So I'm still uh, going through the, the Social Security stuff. And they haven't called me back or nothing. I, I had originally reached out in, uh, in uh, Independence. And then they did. They kind of drug their feet and weren't helping me, so I filed for it in Wichita, like a like a uh, the letter I, I got from them stated, and uh, they just independent sent me a letter saying that they denied SSI because of uh, me saying I didn't want it. Well, I didn't. I did want it. I just had to have Wichita do it because it took so long for me to get in there. And I went. To, I went to Wichita. And I, I got everything set up. I haven't heard anything back. They're supposed to reach out to me, um, but I haven't been in independence in a little while. And and, and my neighbors get my mail. I got. I got a bunch of mail now that. I just didn't know that what the court date was the second. I thought it was the eighth. It had been like the eighth or the ninth or the tenth every time. I'm not sure how I got misconstrued on that. But when did you file your application in Wichita? Um, let me look at the paper. I, it, it should be in his email, but let me let me take a look. Oh, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. I have it because I just sent it. Oh, there it is. It is stamped February 8th. And you still haven't heard anything from them, you're saying? Uh, I, got a, I got a letter saying something, but it didn't. It was nothing definitive. I, I didn't get anything saying, uh, you know, time to come back or another appointment or, you know, just a letter confirming that I've been there. And, you know, Mr. Basically. Garrison, is this with your attorney in Wichita? No, ma'am. That, that attorney was just the attorney that handled the, uh, the accident. Uh, he wasn't like, he's not like my attorney for anything. Now he's he's, he's well. Who did you file this with? Because SSA doesn't set up appointments. So who did you? What do you mean file it with? The paper stamped and signed by them. That's where I went to here in the Wichita office. I mean, the I, Social I, Security I, office. Uh yeah this yeah. Okay, and I guess I'm very confused because you were told in August of 2022, October of 2022, December of 2022, February of 2023, and April of 2023 to provide my office with any kind of documents that you have concerning yeah. your disability or your application to Social Security, and we've received absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah, so, well, you do, you do have emails in there, and also I did send an email confirming that this that I was reaching the right email address and please advise, which was completely ignored. So I did reach out to you just to have responded to me, and I did send you an email. You need to check your emails because it's in All the documents. All no, your medical I don't, have, I don't have all the documents from, from Lee Gurney and Hess because I, I'm trying to bring them up on this other phone, and, and it's not showing up. I do have them. I, I just couldn't find them, but I never got I never got a response from that email. And he brought it up the last time, and I forgot that I had never that I sent that email saying please advise, like I was asked to do at the court, okay. to make sure that it was the right email. Do you have and pen and paper? Do you have pen I have, and paper? I have, I have the email. It's, no. Do you have pen and paper? Mm -hmm. Look, I'm about done with this going to court every month thing because I'm broke. Then I'll be broke next month. I'm not going to have any money. I'm trying to do the best I can. This, this, this is unnecessary stress that I don't. I can't even barely survive on. I don't need to be harassed about it. I've done. I've, I've given you thousands of dollars, and my kids have seen none of it. So why don't we resolve that issue? Why don't we find out why I'm paying all this money, and their kids aren't getting anything? No money. They're getting nothing. So all this time that you guys are harassing me and taking every penny I got, thousands and thousands of dollars, they've received zero dollars. So can we address the court about this issue instead of hounding me like I'm a like I'm a piece of crap? I want to know what the money's going to. Who is getting this money? Because I'm paying thousands of dollars. I'm not a behind thousands of dollars. I'm paid thousands of dollars, and money that has not even been accounted for won't show up on the thing that says I've even paid it. And then when my ex-wife looks, she sees that there's been no payments made whatsoever. 
and she's gotten no money whatsoever. So my kids are still doing without, and I'm doing, having to pay for that too, as you're still hounding me about money that, you're, that you've already gotten plenty of to have given some to them. So wh why don't you talk to me with a little bit of respect, or we figure something else out. I don't know who you well, are, what your harassment is toward me, but I, I am not going to put up with it. I am well, not going to put up with it. I, have, I am well, disabled. I'm hurt. I have a brain, Mr. Uh, Mr. Garrison? Mr. Yes. Garrison? I am frustrated, uh, Your Honor. I'm sorry, but I am, I am beyond frustrated. This is it. Well, I, there's nothing I can do that I'm not already doing for my kids and for every, for myself. I'm doing everything I possibly can. I went to do SRS. It's going to take a while. We postponed it every month, knowing that it was they weren't going to give me an answer. It takes months. I've been told that by everybody. It takes months. I can't. That's not in my power. I'm not. You know, I don't know what else I can do or say. There's nothing I can do or say about it. Well, I want to make a couple of points. Uh, I understand that there's frustration that comes into this process, and there's from frustration from different quarters in all candor. I mean, there's frustration that you're experiencing and that you've explained uh, here and now. Uh, I think there's likewise uh, almost certainly frustration on the part of DCF because as Ms. Ridgeway had indicated, she has not received any email. You say that you sent an email. You said that yeah, you followed up with an email trying to ascertain for certain that it had gone to the right place and hadn't been so. responded to. And I suppose there's a couple of reasons potentially for that having happened. One, maybe you were due a response. It was the correct email address and they did not respond to you. I suppose it's also possible that it was the wrong email address entirely. I mean, it seems you yourself had some doubt about whether it was sent to the right address. And if the DCF hadn't gotten anything, including the email where you were wanting to corroborate the correct address, uh, that would not be um, anything that they could have done anything about. Because okay, before we go on, that, that, that just got cut off. Natalie was working on it. There are issues. It's, it's not as easy as it looks. But I will tell you the rest of the story, although I haven't seen it all myself. Apparently, they all make nice. And uh, it doesn't get it doesn't get worse. It gets better. So I I don't know. I I, I think I think it's uh, I think it was another ten fifteen minutes, and we we end with redemption. If that makes you feel better. Yep. I am ATA Lloyd Merle Smith P three three five three for the people. Morning, John Jeff Broman P eight zero five one seven on behalf of Senator Jones. Mr. Jones, could you state your name for the record, sir? Yes, you're Cedric Jones. This is a date and time set for a matter in which the defendant is facing count one, discharge of a firearm from a vehicle, felony firearm, count two, assault with intent to do less than great, do harm, less than great bodily harm, felony firearm, assault with a dangerous weapon, Another felony firearm assault. Another uh, assault with intent to create bodily harm less than murder by strangulation. Felony firearm. Felony firearm again. Assault with a dangerous weapon. CCW failed to stop at a scene of property damage accident and commission of a felony with a motor vehicle. This is the date that is set for a pretrial with a jury trial set for August 3rd. Is there anything that we're doing other than saying that there's a jury trial on August 3rd? Um, yes, I've sent an updated gun board letter and had opportunity to speak with the prosecutor. Uh, uh, we are uh, requesting a brief adjournment uh, in order to get a response from the gun board. And ask for one more adjournment for what? You've got a, you've got an August third trial date. I understand, that, but but there was there was no court date from October, um, from October of 2021, I believe, until like May of this year, and um, um, we are again waiting on a um, updated uh, offer from the people. So. Uh, You've still got a trial date of August 3rd. So I, I, under, I understand that. So we're just asking for one more final pre-trial in, in a, a few weeks so we can get a response. If, we did, the people did receive the new um, request for a gun board review uh, yesterday, Your Honor, and uh, we can process, process that through and perhaps come back in either the end of June. To come back in the end of June. Okay, I'll give you a completely useless trial pre-trial date of six. Okay, this this one here is Meg's fault. 
I think we have a couple days in here. She she mixed it together for me. I'll give you the overview because it's a little hard to follow. This judge, I think, is sitting in for another judge for a week, and nothing goes right. Nothing. She is just cranky about it. I understand. I've been to this call before. She is not happy. 29. But you still have a jury trial date of August 3rd. I understand. Of honor continues. Good luck. Thank you. I don't know. I'm about to get to that. I, I'm trying to figure out where are the people on this trial? Because they said they can't hold them. I'm actually not sure where the defense is. He showed up here at the beginning of the week to ascertain if he was having a trial. Oh, Mr. Mercer? I'm also wondering where Mr. Collins is, the other trial. And again, I was supposed to be in Mackinac, and I'm here for no good reason. Sir? Here's the real problem. She was supposed to be in Mackinac. That's Mackinac Island. It's a nice place in Michigan, if you're not familiar. So she's like, I don't care. I'll cover your damn call. I'll miss Mackinac Island, but let's get something freaking done if I do it. And it just it just won't happen. You're here on what? Morning, Your Honor. Uh, Yvonne Keller on People versus Castello for sentencing judge. All righty. And Mr. Castello is, I believe, at the Oakland County Jail at this time, Judge. So it's oh, but he's the one who's supposed to be coming in at 11. 10, 10 30. One of those times that we can't do anything about till then. As long as it's today. <laughs> okay, so. We have two trials and no trial defense lawyers. I just spoke to Mr. Mercier. He goes, yes. I'm finishing up a Zoom hearing and I'll be right there. What the hell? Uh -huh. Please excuse me. Yes, <laughs> certainly. That was actually charming. Her reaction was better. She said, what the hell? But she was, she shocked herself. <laughs> it's, it's almost cute. And I did call Mr. Collins. I told him what you told him. She told me what he said. I'll be right there. I just spoke to him. Right. Tell him to come up here now. Each minute is going to cost him $100. All right. I do. I do say it so I indicate for the record that the following two cases were scheduled for trial. 21 0 0. Judge, I'm sorry, I'm just talking to him. Oh, I'm, excuse me. Okay, I'm ready now. Sorry. 21-002230, People versus Carl Ramon Gibbs was scheduled for jury trial today. Mr. Gibbs has declined to leave the jail. His lawyer has declined to appear. Additionally. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. In that particular case, I think that is a missed scheduled event because he was supposed to get a newly hired attorney and I haven't even talked to that person. So we would not be in a jury trial status ready at that point. So I, I think that was misscheduled on your docket. This is good. I mean, I, I don't know if she wasn't speaking into the mic, but she just walks out. <laughs> She doesn't say court adjourned to, you know, I'll be back in five. She just rolls. Like, I have heard enough of this crap. <laughs> it sits like that for 10 minutes. I, I cut it out. But she, she's just like, I, I, I can't deal with this. Here she is coming back. Where's back at the end? Where's back on the record? According to the court's docket, which was, and the court conveyed to others, 21-002230, People versus Carl Ramon Gibbs, was set for a jury trial. The court contacted, asked the court staff to contact Mr. Collins, who was listed as counsel of record, who came in. The court had sent the deputies to get Mr. Gibbs from the Wayne County Jail. Mr. Gibbs declined to come. 
having conveyed to the deputies as best I understand it. First, that he'd already been tried, which he had, in fact, on a capital case, and that he had was, quote, retaining or had retained a lawyer whose name he did not share. So, on behalf of the people and on behalf and Mr. Collins, if you could state your yes, appearance, information, whatever you know, for the record. APA Lawyer Marlowe Smith, P 83353 for the people. And good morning, Your Honor. Harold Collins, <coughs> P56805 on behalf of Mr. Gibbs, who is not present in the courtroom nor on Zoom. And as the court has explained, where, where, why his presence is not uh, in this courtroom today. People would wait, um, have no objection to waiting for his presence. Judge, my understanding of this case, and uh, always a dilemma of sorts when we take these cases from assigned counsel, and I do that in an effort to continue to move the docket and help the court out. My understanding that this case was up for a review on one case and potentially a sentencing of which I had not received any pre-sentence investigation report. So I was coming today to either get that documentation and go over his sentencing with him and find out what was happening on his other case. That was what my, and I had some back and forth uh, dates. Ms. Walters changed a couple of days, but it was today was the day for all of that to happen. And that information is printing on my appointment sheets. I did not bring them today, but a sentencing and I did a review. So that's where I am, Judge. And I apologize for it. Yes, ma'am. And Your Honor, if I may. So back um, as I was prepping for the jury trial on his, on the defendant's uh, P.O.R.N.O. possession case, I started sending documentation to who I knew to be Mr. Gibbs's attorney previously. I was then informed that he had withdrawn from the case. Mr. Bozzi was given, there was an order withdrawing Mr. Bozzi and... Uh, Mr. Ninehouse, actually. Nine, no, okay. There was Bozzi on one file. But oh, can okay. I have the files? Yeah. Okay, so... He's been for several attorneys, that helps. <laughs> it doesn't help, and, and it's really not fun. Um, <laughs> it doesn't help. Oh, sweet Jesus. The prosecutor comes in, I get it, but it's, it's like if anything worked, she'd be okay. But it's every freaking case. On case number 21-0035, seven, eight, in which allegedly the charge was carjacking, robbery, armed, assault with intention of great bodily harm, less than murder. As of 12-14, 2022, the defendant was ordered remanded until sentencing. That's the last signed order in the court. The exterior of the file indicated that the sentencing was initially was set for January, but kept getting moved and moved and moved. But that there was to be a review today, um, I guess, waiting to for the outcome of an alleged jury trial. That on 21003578, that, uh, this is backwards, 3578 was the one on which there Yep. M meanwhile, the judge she's covering for is up in uh, is up in Mackinac Island, <laughs> taking the horse drawn carriage up to the uh, Mackinac Grand. There was to be a review date, <laughs> and two two three zero was the one which was set ugly. for a jury trial. Um, that's what we were told. I, I don't understand this at all, but no, no, there is no pre sentence report. No, there is no. 
And uh, clearly the people didn't subpoena witnesses. <laughs> What's next? Who represents this gentleman? We have any idea on this second chart? So my last note on this file in this case was that the withdrawal was given to, um, was granted to Mr. Nyenhouse and that we were working to get him a new attorney and our next date was supposed to be 531 to find out who that new attorney was. And we haven't had a meeting since then. And that is why we were unaware that the June 8th was set as a trial date at all, because that was never anything that anyone talked about. Well, we talked about it in this courtroom this week, but I, I don't know who else talked about it. We, I thought this would convey to you having to do with why there were two Whoa. trials set for today and why Rough. there was a problem. But regardless... We never talked about it. Uh, yeah, we talked about it this week in this courtroom. That That's that's awkward. Uh, that, which is concerning to me, um, the people are not prepared to go forward. There is no lawyer who has filed any appearance, apparently. Mr. Collins, you're not on the other case, right? I don't believe so, Judge. You don't believe so. That's kind of scary, too. <laughs> Well, let me say this. I took, I got appointments. I don't believe so. That's kind of scary too. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, this is the twilight zone. Cheats. One that said sentencing, one that said review. So I suppose I, I am supposed to be assigned to the case that's up for review. And I don't know those numbers by off the top of my head. So the only I, case that would be up for you would be the one that was sentenced for sentencing. I don't do the computer and I, I, I don't do anything about this. This said that there was a pretrial on and on Gibbs there was a pretrial set for 6-1. Did that occur? Did I miss it? 6-1 is when Mr. Someone came in. You indicated that we're going to do it on the 8th. Do we know who appeared? I do not. Know. And it was on this case. So yes. Some human being came in. Yes. Okay. I'll set both of these cases for a pre-file on 628, and Judge Kuzak will no doubt know more about this than I ever want to know we'll be able to create order out of chaos. Thank you. Okay, Kat. Thank you, Judge. What's the date again, Judge? 628. So there's, in theory, there was a trial scheduled today for Mr. Nasser. So let's call that. Have people tell me what that is. Yeah, before we go on the record, please. Uh, I apologize as I'm in Zoom with the clerk, so the court, and his case started with the trial. He was kind enough to be able to speak by the That was very nice of him. Case number 22004076, versus a sale answer, where there was a pretrial on Monday and I, there was an inquiry as to whether there was, and so I was, we called for a jury. So what, what do you want to tell me about this one? State your appearances. APA, Lord Marlis, on page 3353, the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Dream Daniel Mercer, P72620. I'm representing Mr. Zill Nasser. My name is Zill Ali Nasser. Yes, sir. Your Honor, the police witnesses are here. However, our complainants are not, and the people cannot proceed. So make a motion to uh, dismiss with, uh, without prejudice, obviously. Granted. Okay, that was at least rational. The, the It's set for trial. They've got the officer. The complaining witness isn't there. The state can't proceed. They're honest about it. Defense uh, motions for a dismissal, and she grants it. I mean, it's still frustrating, but it's it, that's what's supposed to happen if things aren't together on a trial day. Thank you. We're waiting for an appearance from a jailer. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? 
I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> I feel the same way today. Probably not. No. <laughs> Mr. Bozzi, unmute your device. Mr. Bozzi, can you say your name? Oh, no, it's Dad Bezzy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, um, today we're here just for a competency review date. Um, Mr. Bozzi was found incompetent but restorable with the necessary treatment. Um, Judge Cusick signed that order on August 12th of 2022. Um, I don't have any updated report from the Forensic Center on A, if he's been receiving any treatment, or B, what his current competency status is. And usually we do receive one of those reports um, yeah, in well, about six to eight months, but we have not yet. Okay, so there's a note. I don't know from whom. So I'll just read it. It says um, that they were waiting for a spot at the forensic center. Yes, that was the last update I had received um, prior to the last hearing. I know the forensic center is very backed up. And there's a lot of individuals waiting for beds there. Okay. As I'm taking a, a bit of a different approach, um, I thought, I understand what the prosecutor is saying, but I thought because it's been so long, it's been 50, over 15 months since the Department of Human or Health and Services deemed them incompetent. And I'm reading section MCL 3302044, dismissal of charges. Same or other charges, examination defendant as outpatient. Charges against the defendant determined incompetent to stay in trial shall be dismissed, A, if the prosecutor does it, which they're not doing, B, 15 months after the date of which the, the defendant was originally determined incompetent to stay in trial. I understand the prosecutor is making an argument that's, that's from Judge Cusack's order in 2022, but my client was deemed incompetent almost in 2020. I think the evaluation was done in 2020. In December 2021, feel free to file a written motion. I mean, seriously, the, the guy's argument is is good as far as it goes, but it, but it begs the question: Why the hell haven't you filed a motion? It's the only thing the judge could say. The people, okay. Yeah, the people's position is that report is the finding of the forensic center the judge, until the court adopts that and um, orders the incompetency. The court speaks through its written orders. If there were any. So you need to file a motion. People would have to file a response. I will require that the motion to dismiss be filed no later than June 30th. The people's response would be filed no later than July 14th, and that a hearing would be held on the 28th. And and we'll get an order, so I'll be speaking through that order. <laughs> you guys can get it finally to a resolution. So you said the 14th is the response date, just so I have that clear. His date is, well, you only have a response date if you file. Gotcha. 7, 628, 714, 728, hearing date. Judge, I'm gone the 28th of July. I'm gone the 27th of 28th. Do it sooner or no? Um, you didn't see June 20th, did you? The next hearing date? July. July, yeah, I'm going on the 27th and 28th. I don't believe that, that Judge Cusick will even be here before then, but. So, like a second. Please don't leave before you get an order. Thank you. Mr. Bozzi, what we're telling you is that, the, that, that there's a mess, and the way the mess will be clarified is that your lawyer will file a paper stating what his position is. The defense, the uh, as, as the defendant, the people will file their response um, as on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan, that the judge who has managed this case since 21, 
will then have the opportunity to read both of those and make a determination as to whether there will be a dismissal or whether or not it would be recommended that some sort of treatment actually occur. Okay. Thank you, sir. You can go. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. You actually think I listened to myself. 628, 714, 82. Have a good day. You too. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> no response to that. There we go. The end of Judge's Hell Week. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming out. I will. I will. Again, as, as usual, I wasn't going to do it. But then, you know, this one is really Colin's fault. He sent me that that Washington case. It was so crazy. I had to go with it. And then, and then all the all of it kept coming in, and it's like a full full moon Friday. Like everything was just weird. That 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 was the uh, that was the theme. I didn't I didn't go looking for the theme. The theme found me. All right, everyone, be careful. Don't get in trouble. I'll see you all soon.